The following program was made possible by a grant from Rolex Corporation. Welcome to Kentucky, the ultimate trial, the 1982 Rolex three-day event. Hello, I'm Nigel Cassidy here at the Kentucky Horse Park, and with me is Denny Emerson, a former Olympic three-day event rider. Nigel, what we're here to see is sort of a triathlon for horse and rider that takes place over three days and has three separate tests. The first day is the dressage, a series of intricate controlled maneuvers, not unlike the compulsory figures in figure skating. This is designed to test the obedience of the horse. The second day is the tough day. That's the speed and endurance day, 10 miles over 25 massive natural obstacles, much of it at a gallop. The third day is show jumping, a more precise form of jumping designed also to see whether the horse is still sound and fit from the day before. And now for the first phase of the competition, dressage. And coming to the dressage arena now is the Grey Goose and Kim Molness. Grey Goose owned and ridden by Kim Molness from Woodbury, Connecticut. Com combination was second here at the Rolex International Kentucky Horse Trials last year. Okay, let's ride this one through the test, Nigel, and we'll watch the different movements that she makes. That's the halt, and he's supposed to be absolutely quiet and square and straight at the halt. And I would say that was a good halt. Now she goes forward at what we call a working trot, which is just his normal gait, his normal pace in the trot turns to the left, and when you see her come to the letter S over there, he'll go f into a longer, springier pace called a, <clears throat> called a medium trot. You see how his legs are springing further forward and his hindquarters are coming more under him. She'll make a circle at the medium trot and continue it up to the letter V, and at V, <clears throat> you'll see her come back to a, a quieter, steadier movement. There, you see, he's slowing down. Now she'll come down the center line, and she has to be absolutely straight, looking right at General Burton, the, the chief judge. And when she comes opposite the letter V, she'll make a 10-meter circle to the left, and then go into a difficult movement called the half pass. And at the half pass, <coughs> she'll be going to S. So she'll be going forward and sideways. And the horse has to be looking toward the letter S and moving toward the letter S with his feet crossing over, and the judges look to see whether he is bent in the direction of the letter. Now at C, he's going to go back five steps. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops, he got in a sixth. That'll count against him a little bit. Also, he did it a little too quickly. That should have been slow and even and steady. Slow and even. <clears throat> now she's going to make another one of those medium trot circles. Here he comes into that springier, bouncier way of moving. Curves around, touches the track at E curves around, touches the track at B, and continues that big the track springy, being the outside. the outside of the arena there. And now at P, he'll come back to a slower, there he comes back to a slower movement. Now once again, <coughs> down the center line, turning absolutely straight toward the judge, and opposite P, he'll make a 10 meter circle to the, to the right. Incidentally, these, the, the letters have no particular significance. I don't know why they have the letters that they use. It's, it's not a code or anything. Now he's making his half pass to the right, looking a little bit to the right, and moving forward and sideways. And his, the front part of the horse should be a little more toward the, toward the letter than the hind quarter. Now he's going to halt for five seconds at C. And he's not quite square. And then go forward directly <laughs> into a sitting trot. Sitting trot is when the when rider, the rider stays. doesn't post, doesn't. And now she's coming across in a rising trot, in an extended trot where he has this long, springy, very, very uh, lengthened um, stride at the trot. Now she comes back to a working trot along around the short end here, and then you'll see her go across the diagonal again from K to M once again in that big, long. Now that's a quite a brilliant extended trot with his front legs really flinging out and his hindquarters swinging in behind, underneath him. His hindquarters being? The two hind legs. And now at C, she comes back to a walk. <coughs> now she does what I think is, is kind of a difficult movement. 
she'll walk up to S and then across from S to P and then up to F and actually all the way to A. And with these horses that are so well conditioned and so fit, these horses have to be able to gallop 10 miles tomorrow and jump 35 fences. They're fitter than a racehorse. And to walk calmly and quietly when they're that full of energy and that full of life is a very difficult thing to ask them to do. Because they have, know what's going to happen. They know more. what's going to happen and they're ready. Now he's doing this pretty well. This is a good calm walk. He's walking forward nicely. He isn't jigging, which means sort of dancing around in that sort of a nervous little way. Now she comes directly into a right lead canter. <clears throat> you can see when he's turning to the right, his right front leg and his right hind leg land in advance of the left front leg. That's a balance thing. A horse will almost always land on the lead that he's in the direction he's going. Now you see he's making three loops. In the middle loop, he has to stay on the right lead even though he's turning to the left. And this is against his instincts. He wants to switch his lead back. Now she's changed and she's going back on the third loop to the right and that he's much more happy about that. But he did the, he did the counter canter, we call it, very well. Now across the diagonal, she goes forward into a, into a gallop. Extended canter is actually the term. She didn't get a whole lot of <laughs> extension there, I didn't think, Nigel. It, it looked as though she was playing it a little cautious. Worried that he might he, not be able he, to come back. he might or... explode mm -hmm. and, and, and be difficult for the rest of the test. Because that's sort of a key, to, a cue to these event horses to go. They, they're ready to go. They want to go. Now she'll do her serpentines on the left lead, three of them. See, her first, lead, her first loop, and they're all they're equal, three 20-meter loops. Now she's going into the more difficult counter canter loop where he is turning to the right but staying on the left lead. Now here he comes back to the left on the left lead, which he feels more balanced at. And now from H over in that corner back to F, he will come strongly forward once again in a extended canter. <clears throat> I think she's letting him go a little more forward this time. That's better. That's better. Now she comes back to a working trot. Down that has to be smooth from the smooth one. Smooth from the one gate to the other. Now she comes down the center line, absolutely straight toward General Burton, and picks up her right lead canter right there. That looked very good. Coming down in between H and M, she will halt and stand absolutely immobile if she does it well. With the feet even, excellent. I would say, Nigel, that is one of the better tests we've seen and might very well be one of the better tests of the day. How to compete is collector's item, a 17 hand, nine year old gelding, a big horse at 17 hands, owned and ridden by Tom Wilson from Middleburg, Virginia, and wearing a saddle pad from Puerto Rico, having been a resident of Puerto Rico. He competed at the American Young Rider, Continental Young Riders Competition last year in Illinois, where they were eighth, riding under the flag of Puerto Rico. And now to go is Silent Partner, owned and ridden by Karen Styes from Dover, Massachusetts. This combination were actually tied for first at the national championships at the Armadon Chesterland three-day event last year, and the tie was broken after the cross-country. Top contender now for the team. And now entering the dressage arena is Cobblestone, a 12-year-old grey gelding, owned and ridden by Nancy Bliss from Warner, New Hampshire. Combination competed last year at the national championships. They were fourth in the national championships, and Nancy was the junior national champion the year before in 1980. To enter the arena now will be Better and Better and Mike Plum. Better and Better, owned by Mr. Ronald Mara from West Grove, Pennsylvania. Mike, better the really seasoned international competitor, I think probably the only man to have ridden in six Olympic Games, starting with Rome in 1960. Danny, that completes the first day of the dressage. So let us now run down the placings after the dressage. In first place is Tom Wilson and Collector's Item. Second, Silent Partner and Karen Stives. Third is the Grey Goose and Kim Walness with Better and Better. Uh, correction, fourth place is Quality Scope and 
Mike Plum. We have a tie for sixth place of Cobblestone and Nancy Bliss and Kilgrogan and Karen Lendy. Better and Better and Mike Plummer eighth. Southern Comfort and Torrance Watkins in ninth place. Tenth is Gray Tudor and Karen Stives. And we now go to the Speed and Endurance, Denny. What comes up first? Well, the first thing, Nigel, that we'll be looking at is the uh, steeplechase. Now, the steeplechase is the fastest part of the entire event. It takes place on a uh, track, a rolling track, with eight or nine uh, big brush obstacles. The horses gallop at very high speeds. Uh, twice around, uh, and when they end, they have a little break before they go on on their way to the really major phase of the competition, the cross country. Which is what we'll be seeing next. That's right. Out of the starting box, having completed the roads and tracks and steeplechase, Thriller the second and Derek de Grazia as they come to the first. What's he thinking at the moment, Danny? He wants to get in right to this first fence and get him over it and get him going around this turn. He's got a pretty long run now down to the second fence. What I always try to do is get organized. You can see another horse, see the gray horse there beside him? That's coming in on roads and tracks to start the cross country. Now Derek comes around. To the table. Big jump over that table. That thing is huge. You can lay straight across it, and it's six feet wide on top. So they down, down the hill now for the Jenny Lane crossing. This is a very tricky jump coming up because you have to, you have four different jumping efforts, and he has to get his line just right or the horse will duck out or run run to the side of the fence. You can see Derek sitting back and taking hold of his horse's mouth and setting him up and now he's going to put his leg on and go for it. Over the first, hold him together, put in a little chip stride. Now there's sort of an S turn and over that great big bank and then another little chip but he's out and he's okay. That's a one of the toughest combinations on the course. Coming out of the sinkhole, this is a light into dark, all of a sudden the horse is, it's like he's jumping into a hole in the ground. You see him twist over that, Derek gets him back, very strong rider, and then gets him out over the not too difficult second part of that combination. Uh, now approaching the Lexington Bank, which has been redesigned this year from the original from the World Championships. This thing you've got to ride, Nigel, like Indians are behind you. There's, you've got no alternative, you just get on that thing and get off. You can see him attacking forward and on and stride and up and on and that little go okay and, and over big so drop when you hit on the drop like that you just feel your teeth drop and now he's galloping up to the top of the hill he goes off and uh, down to the great big open ditch and wall he's right back moving but well still he's about halfway through the course and there still still is a lot of run in this horse now coming to the head of the lake this is the toughest fence on the course, I think, and then little stride and a tremendous drop into water, splashing through, jumping up onto this big bank, caught a hind leg, and over. Beautiful ride. That guy is so good. He just is carrying that horse through there. Now he's got a little breather before the next one. When you've had a tough fence, they you've come got now to and he swings across the marks lane now and to the last is his twenty-five fences. And a little chip, and I'll tell you, when you see that last fence coming, you see him check his watch? That's to see if he's got to make the time. So he gallops on. We'll see the finish flag coming up. And he's punching his watch out, and he's clear. And now Karen Karko and Kalani, uh, national intermediate champion of last year. This is a good young rider on a good horse, but pretty inexperienced at this level, Nigel. So she's starting out a little more slowly. Derek, hit, Derek the, hit the first fence, moving. Yeah, Karen's a little, maybe a little tentative here, and you see him chip in that little stride, didn't get his takeoff point quite right, but now he's moving better. How's her confidence now as he sort of put a short one in then? I think it's too early in the course to tell. You've got to get two or three fences under your belt. And over he's the giant's table, that's yeah, beautiful nicely jump over, over there. that. He's going well now. Look at him gallop. Big open stride. This is a huge horse. Uh, Mark, 17 hands tall. Jenny Lane has been altered very much this year from the World Championships where it was just the two banks. I think the courses here, Nigel, is many parts of it are tougher than the World Championships, and people thought that was tough. But the weather's with us. It's so perfect. Over that, a little turn. Beautiful there. Little bobble, but she... Oh, he, he banks that onto one. onto it and over. Beautifully ridden. She kept him going forward. Now see her reach down and pat him. 
We'll move on to the long run of the sinkhole at the far end of the course, <coughs> approaching the sinkhole this on this misty morning. I don't morning. like this fence. It's a, you're jumping into that, that hole and the horses oh, can't and see it. Oh, God, he, he hits it. Oh, God. And he just kicked her in the head as he went by. And she's, she's moving. She's, she's okay. His hind foot just went right over and which is unusual like for a in the, hind, in the uh -huh. side of the head. Now in slow motion, uh, let's see it again. As he, over. He, he looks all right coming into there, Denny. Yep. I, I think it's so dark, and he, as he jumps, let's see what happens now. He twists, he almost, and that left front, front leg there. never, never, never got, got, got up. Yeah. And he, she lands under him, and as she rolls, his hind leg. Did you walk? He just had no way of, she's sitting up there, she's no way of getting up. out of the way. I mean, that yeah. is the kind of fall that you can't imagine she'll be well, right. And there she is walking. I'm sure she's got a bit of a headache at this moment. Those things look as though there's no way you're going to walk away from them. When you think that a horse weighs 12 or 1300 pounds and walks right over you. And she's all right. That, those are the kinds of things that you don't like to see. That's for sure. And now on course is Grey Goose and Kim Walness. Uh, the super horse. This is the super horse. Just goes. This is an Irish bred horse that Kim has been competing with for years. And I think if there's one horse at this competition that everybody riding there would like to be sitting on, it's the Grey Goose. And Mother Goose, as your coach Jack Legoff calls it. Mother Goose and the Grey Goose. Goose. Huge jump over that. Loses her reins a little. Now coming down the hill, just galloping. He's got just, such a stride on this horse, isn't it? He just takes her for a ride. She points and he goes. Must be the most marvelous feeding to ride Picks across the ears. This and checks, checks his own stride, Take checks his own stride, huge banks bank. That. And banks Pops that one on. again. Typical Larry Shores, banking the banks. Yep. Lands on top and pushes off with his hind legs. And at the sinkhole on this misty morning. No problems with that, that horse. Look at that. Gets him turned, sets I'm himself sorry. up, and makes it look like a child. Mother Goose and the Grey Goose. And coming, moving really on now onto the Lexington Bank. Onto the bank, they have to go, and then over the ditch. Onto the next bank, there they go. Stride, look at it. Scrambles a little, keeps coming. And, and straight off beautifully the top. over, never even touched that brush roll coming off. What's the drop off that fence there, Danny? If you if you jump from halfway up the bank, Nigel, I think you're, you're landing seven, seven and a half feet down. That is a huge drop. Maximum drop for the advanced is what six, six feet. Them. Yeah, but I mean that's if they come to the bottom of it. But the way some of those horses are jumping, it's like coming off the side of a house. Into the water now. <coughs> over the ditch. Little scramble. Mm. Just kind of rolls over that. On a loose rein right through there. Just Look grabs at him by the mane and, and lets him do it. Just, just amazing. They go on off now to the far end of the course. There, are, I've had people say to me that this is the best three-day event horse in the world. Okay, two from home now, the park bench. Huge jump over that, and just galloping. This horse has so much energy. They pass there, one of the preliminary fences, and now over the Huge last. Huge jump over the last, and look, still on a loose rein. Look at him. And just flat out running. Amazing. That's, that is a super horse, Nigel. I wish we had ten of them. And now, coming out of the start box, will be Silent Partner and Karen Stives. They were second after the dressage. They've done the steeplechase now and the roads and tracks. This is another really good horse and one of the top <coughs> riders in the United States. She's, this is her first of three horses, second of three horses that she has to ride today. She'll be doing, uh, what, 30 miles and 90 fences yeah, today. I think this is her best horse, too. Now she's coming down to the first. Remember, the thing they want to do is to get the horse going forward and try to get a good first fence, get him balanced in front of the fence. Oh, oh he, he never took off! He never, he left, never, he, left, never left the ground. She is not moving. That she's, looks serious. The, What's this, in slow motion? He gets so close, he, he hits did. it just above 
And look at that, right oh God, over right the... over her. I mean, what that's, a that's horrendous fall. Pounds of that, it's always... Now there's, now there's the, a doctor the doctor. there. They're, they're radioing for the, for the ambulance. Horse is okay. I mean, there is one of the easiest fences on the course. And he the just horse just never left the ground. He never left the ground. He, he, he realized he was jumping at the last fraction of a second and he never got his front legs up. And he had to fall. And now it's Cobblestone, yeah. Nancy Bliss, former junior national champion, 22 years old, one of the youngest riders. And this horse is part Arabian. Oh, Whoa, he left out a stride there. He did the opposite of what Silent Partner did. Silent Partner never left the ground, and that one left it too soon. Cobblestone gets really strong at the beginning, and Nancy is a big, strong girl, and she has to just lean back and hold him. Oh, close into the table there, yep, Danny. But, he is, but you see, he is really quick with his knees. Do you see yep. how his front legs get wet up so fast? He'll, he will very rarely get trapped. Um, the way we've seen with a couple of these falls, because his knees come up like they're on strings. At the Jenny Lane crossing, the yeah. four fences all in a row now. Look at him, he always wants to go forward. Always over, two strides, over and Banked on. It. Turn. Yeah. Banked again. And over, yeah. really nicely too. But see, this he's a quick, agile little horse. He's probably three quarters thoroughbred and one quarter Arab. And he's quick and wiry. He's a cat. Tries to stop a little bit there. Nancy just rides him forward, gets the turn, and, and pops out right on through. Very, very quick. Still yep. moving along really well. There's a nice crowd out there today, Danny. Lots of people here. Today. At the Lexington yep. Bank. Now she comes back with her upper body, keeps that leg on, drives him onto the bank. Leg, leg. And off. And okay. You see, he came down the bank a little bit, so he didn't have that tremendous thudding jar. I like the way he came off. Instead of launching himself into space, he sort of popped down off. I think you're riding this one all the way, Danny. Well, I've ridden this one a lot. Now at the water. And out. Whoa, a tight one. You see how his knees just come shooting mm -hmm. up like they're on strings? Off to the far end of the course, the opposite end from the sinkhole. Most falls are caused because the knees don't get up in time. Yeah. The Quickly. front legs don't get don't get jerked up out of the way. Quickly over the bench there. And moving into the last. Well, nicely over. Now Nancy looking at her watch, see what her time is. I think she's pretty early. <laughs> and the horse still has got plenty of run and in safely. Now she drops her stick, getting ready to drop her stick because that has to be done. Peter Green. Chevis Regal. Flashy looking horse, I always think. Again, this tricky first fence. It's not really tricky, it's the fact that it's the first fence on the course that the horse isn't into his stride yet. And he's just completed the steeplechase and the roads and tracks. Got a long run around the turn now. Coming now at the table again. And now coming to Jenny Lane. What you want to do here, you've got this long downhill gallop and when the horses come around the turn, they're going to be a little bit out of balance. And you've got to set them up again, get their hind legs sort of kicked up under them. And then look for your look for your line, because the rider has a specific place that he wants to go. Now it's a turn to the left, and then veer back to the right. Peter elected to go around the tree. That's the first one we've seen do this. You lose a lot of time that way. But you lose some time, but you get a straighter approach. So it worked. Yep. For the three or four seconds he lost, he get guaranteed that he'd get in absolutely straight. He's just taking a long way around on this. Uh, I don't like this fence, Roger. It's, they're jumping downhill. It's dark. They've been out in the light. Now they're coming into sort of this pine, this grove of trees. 
the the sinkhole is there something like that going to be on the world championship course at Lemulin? I think maybe that's they think there is maybe that's where they put it now at the Lexington bank comes in and onto the bank over the ditch quietly and jump right off the top of the bank I know. see that's what I mean when you do that you're, you're dropping down seven and a half or eight feet Danny we've just heard the two riders that fell Karen Carco and Karen Stives are, are well they're not feeling too well I'm sure but uh, no serious injuries Peter oh, oh. hits that hard on almost that. And, oh letting Shevers nope. do all the work there what is he doing he's making a loop he, he, he feels he didn't have enough room now that won't count as a refusal will it because I don't think he no it didn't cross his tracks he didn't actually wasn't. turn his back on the fence but he sure lost some time he doesn't look very reorganized yet yep. now he's two from home the park bench and fighting it a bit there well, these horses have got to be tired this is this is just at the end of 10 miles and they've been doesn't look that tired actually no moving moving well there look at him stretch out there oh Lovely yeah he's picture. still got some run left this is a big rangy looking horse and then through the finish and now in the start box better and better and mike plum the six-time Olympic rider. This horse won the silver medal <clears throat> with Mike at the 1976 Olympics in Bromont, Canada. What Mike doesn't know about riding a horse, not too many people have ever even thought of. This guy, I think, is probably the most experienced three-day event rider in the world. Um, he can ride young horses, green horses, um, and he gets a good round out of almost every horse. Oh, better and better is how old is he now, Nigel? Twelve mm -hmm. or thirteen? Twelve. He was seven when he won the gold medal or the silver medal in uh, Canada. That's when the American team won the the gold, the team gold, and the individual silver and the individual gold too, right? They That's right. Clean, absolutely cleaned up that year. Mike is incredibly strong. Um, I've heard it said of Mike that he could have been a a good. He could have made it as a professional baseball player or a professional football player. He's a little small maybe for football, but that whatever sport he picked, he was going to be good at. Right. He was going to be um, just an incredible athlete. Incredible athlete. There, down off that. You don't um, see him dropping his reins or getting loose in no. these combinations. Everything is tight and precise and powerful. Mike's 42 years old, which for some sports would be coming to the end of the line, but Mike is just in his prime. I didn't know he was that old. Well, he's been doing this at the... He's, he rode in his first Olympics in 1960, Nigel. That's, that's 22 years ago. That's right. And Look at that. And go! That incredible, powerful leg just drives that horse forward. And you never see Mike out of balance. You never see Mike with his leg anywhere other than right under him. I mean, to me, this is the best cross-country rider in the world we're watching right this minute. Quiet, flowing movement as they go up out of sight. Now down the hill to the water and push drive i mean if mike horses don't want to look, stop. At, look at the way he picked up his reins there, and straight immediately away. and those tight tight legs never out of place and the quick use of the crop we are watching the best cross-country rider in the world there are probably two or three others that are close but i think this guy is the best as he checks into the last or the bench there not the last Around gets the his preliminary. reins together checks his watch this is a pro. This is like watching any of the top pros at whatever sport. Over the last checks, watch again, and on the run into the finish. Into the finish, still in perfect control, perfect oh. harmony, perfect round. Mike Plum. And now is Leonidas and Grant Schneidman. As they set out on the cross country. Another experienced combination. They've ridden for the United States before. Twice at uh, Le Moulin in Germany where the World Championships are this year. I think Grant is uh, one of the very promising young riders <coughs> in the United States. I think that he's got a lot of quiet determination and uh, he's come a long way in a relatively short time. Oh, a very tricky the horse hit it in front 
and pitched Grant up on his neck and Grant just got back in the middle of the horse. And, but that's got to shake a horse up. Let's see how he goes through Jenny Lane. You don't want to do two or three of those in a row, Nigel, where your horse hits one hard. You'd like to, like to give him a couple of good fences now to get his confidence back. Let's just watch him quietly through this one. Now, do you notice yep. what he did over those banks? He hit that table so hard and it stung him that he never touched those banks, one of the few horses we've seen go through here without doing that. I'm sure that's why. Made that yeah, look made very that easy. Look very easy. He's right back in his stride. Sometimes a sting like that helps a horse. It makes him remember what he's out there doing. Approach the bank. Drive, 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 and on. Oh, really well. Done. Uh, I am oh, right off the top of the bank. Tremendous drive. And when you stand up there, it looks like you're on the first floor of a house. Two fences between here and the water. Kentucky Horse Park is beautiful. There's no two ways about it. That's one of the best places in the world for a three-day horse. Hits him, keeps hitting him, and the horse just keeps driving forward. It pops out, and in two strides, the band is still right in balance, right in the middle of the sword. For a while, I think Grant was an under underrated rider, but I don't think anybody's underrating him anymore. The park bench, which is, what type of fence is that, Danny? It's just like a huge seat. Uh, got a little close to that last one. Look at the lather all over it. Grant must think he's a little behind time of yeah, riding hard. galloping in. And in the start box is Cinnamon and Nick Holmes Smith from Canada. Canadians using this also as their selection trials for the world championships. Look at that horse try to grab the grab the bit away from his rider. He's got a more severe <coughs> kind of bridle on Nigel. It's called a, a pelham with two reins. The horse must be what we call a strong horse, a horse that likes to grab the bit and run. When we were talking about the dressage yesterday and how fit these horses are, you can just see now how, how fit they need to be. See how he's pitching his head, trying to grab, root the reins out of uh, Nick's hands. He's got a gag on it. He's got a gag, it's yeah, not a, it's got even reins. It's a, kind of, it's a kind of bit that gives him more leverage and control. Taking the long route through there and nicely through it. A good jumper, this horse. I believe he's a, an English bred horse. Oh, very strong there. That nearly didn't turn him. See how he goes through the water. Oh, put in a little stride. That was nicely done. He really is bold. He can really jump a fence. He can jump a huge fence. I think the problem with him is keeping him under control, not whether or not he can jump. You know, one thing that I've found happens at your last couple of fences, you think you're home free. You've just got to resist the temptation to let the horse do it on his own because they're tired and they can have a fall on the last fence as easily as they can anywhere else got to keep riding them. Usually they make an easy last fence or two to prevent that from happening and still just flat out running on the way home. Cinnamon and Nick Holmes Smith hoping for a spot on the Canadian team. And this is Torrance Watkins in Southern Comfort, her New Zealand horse, over the table there. Bronze medalist at the alternate Olympic Games. Must be a 
big change to go from Poltroon, the horse that she had before, the Pinto, the Super Pinto Pony, who was about 15 hands, to go to this giant. He is a big horse, isn't he, if you I, stand beside him? It's like standing next to an elephant. Just in a plain snaffle. One of the mildest type of bits, right, Danny? Right. She rides this thing as well as she rode the little horse. Everybody Anybody that thinks that women can't compete in sports equal to men have never seen a venting because <clears throat> the girls win with alarming frequency, in my opinion. Nothing personal, of course, Danny. This is a horse bred in New Zealand, came halfway around the world. Tremendous power, just tremendous scope. Right into the bottom and nicely out of it. This horse is a real giant. Poltroon was very small, and Torrance rides them both with incredible finesse. They all have to ride at the same weight at 165. Yeah, and you can see those pockets. And Torrance's saddle is filled with lead. But she's not 90 pounds soaking wet. So, carrying that much lead, does that make a difference? I've never had to, but I, th I would think that that stuff would flop around. Here she comes now to the last fence. And well over that and on her way in. And look at him hustle. He's still got plenty oh, of yeah. money to go. Yeah, this is another really good one, that horse, I think. Kenny, the most arduous day of the three-day event is now over. So let us see where everybody stands after the second day. First place, the Grey Goose and Kim Walness. Second place, Cobblestone and Nancy Bliss. With Mike Plum and Better and Better now in third place. Torrance Watkins and Southern Comfort at fourth. Peter Green with Chevis Regal are now fifth. Leonidas and Grant Schneidman are sixth. Freedom Flight and Phyllis Dawson in seventh place. Eighth, Thriller the Second and Derek De Grazia. Now in ninth is Nick Holmes Smith and Cinnamon. Tom Wilson, the overnight leader, is now, and collector's item, is now in tenth place. And we go on now to the third and final phase, the show jumping, Danny. Well, what we're looking for here, Nigel, is uh, seeing whether these horses that have been uh, so uh, taxed the day before can come out and feel comfortable and jump around a course of about 12 fences and. Uh, this is more of a precision and control uh, type of jumping than the cross country. The riders must measure their distance to get to those fences so that the horse doesn't knock a rail down because the rails are penalized. The horses are not allowed to refuse without being penalized. Um, this is not a very tremendous or difficult show jumping course compared to the uh, Grand Prix show jumping, that the, the high jumping. This is a test to determine whether these horses can go out the, the day after the cross country and still function effectively. Good, so now we wait for the first horse to complete the third and final phase, the show jumping. This is Thriller 2, written by Derek De Grazia. Currently in eighth place, a score to date, 58.5. Those penalties are actually 58.8, not 58.5 for Thriller now. Thriller. Thriller 2 and Derek De Grazia. Derek from California, now lives in Massachusetts. Married to a, another very successful event rider, B. Perkins, who... B. actually would have been here. Uh, Nigel competing with a very strong chance of making the American team after the first two selection trials. And her horse uh, went lame. So that's just... That's the name of the game. The name yeah. of the game, isn't it? It's um, very disappointing, I would think. To, to get this close. She had the best record, actually, in the two prior selection trials. This is a very fast horse cross-country. Uh, Derek, again, one of the very experienced American riders who's, who represented the American in uh, international competition before. He's been Comes to Le Moulin in Germany, right? right. Where Came through that combination that so many people are having trouble with and made it look easy.
as a, a very tight turn back for this next fence. Right, and I have to sit back and keep contact with the horse's mouth and make him come through the turn. And now I think they're coming to one of the more difficult fences on the course also, this down, this combination where you land going downhill. You have Take to that one, but still stay there and yeah. nicely out of it. Right, this is a good round. Eric is an experienced rider who stays very cool under pressure. There's a lot of pressure on these guys right now. They're all trying to make one of six slots to go to the World Championships for the United States. Excellent round for Derek. Derek de Graz here and thrill of the second. Next in the ring is number 51, Leonidas, written by Grant Schneidman. Currently in sixth place, a score of 52.6. This is Leonidas and Grant Schneidman. Grant twice represented the United States at Lemulen in Germany, where the, as we've said many times, where the World Championships will be. This is again one of the experienced American uh, combinations of horse and rider. Grant has ridden another horse already today in this competition, and this is his, I would say you would call it his first string horse. Now coming down around this turn to that uh, combination, which means two fences in a row. Let's look at the monitor through, through this one, Danny, and see how he goes. Well over that, one stride and a huge fence out over the, uh, the second jump and over the little uphill one. The horses see that water, Nigel, at the last second and they just back off. They, they, they think about the water instead of think about jumping the fence. And you have to ride around that turn expecting that that's going to happen. We've seen it happen too many times today. Nicely through there. This is a pretty round. I think Grant is a rider who has made constant improvement over the last three or four years. Getting to be very smooth and very polished. Got tremendous drive, tremendous ambition to do well, and it's really beginning to pay off for him. See how really the pushed horse, through there. You know, the horse maybe was thinking about not going, and Grant said, yes, you are going, and he said, okay, you're the boss. It's a good job they say you're the boss, I think. And we wouldn't ride them if they didn't. Now, just one to go. Good round for Grant. A very nice round, Danny said, for Leonidas and Grant Schneidman. Next in the ring is number 40. This is Chivas Regal, written by Peter Green. Currently in fifth place, a score of 51.8. We're coming down to the top five now. So the pressure is really on, and pressure is on these people. Uh, I've been in this, this situation Regal before. And, Peter Green. and uh, you're not only competing against the course, you're competing against the, your own nerves, Nigel. And these okay. people really want to make the team. That's and there's only 12 points between the, the first and the seventh place person, so anything can happen and just a couple of time penalties does. can do you. Peter, another very consistent competitor, has been knocking on the door for the team. These downhill fences, I think, make it a little harder for the horse to judge. Why is that, Denny? Because as he comes downhill, the horse sort of is setting himself up, trying to balance himself. You know the way if you run down a hill, it's not as... Did he get through there? Yes, he did. Yes. And it wasn't very pretty, but he got through without knocking the rail down. Which is all that really counts. And now a hard left hand turn back to this one again. Right. And then to this sort of downhill in and out <clears throat> with three parts. You have to jump over the first one, take a stride, or sometimes some of them have been taking two. Oh, he, he hit that rail pretty hard, but it stayed up and he got out safely. Good for Peter. And a huge fence over that, big 
big that, spread. That's a maximum spread, isn't that's it? That's a big fence. And through the water, Downhill up, up that little lip, and out over the, uh, the fence, and one to go. And over nicely for Peter Green. second ride. She had three rides due for the whole weekend. Uh, her other, one of her other rides withdrew through the cross country. This rider represented the United States at the alternate Olympics in 1980 and won the individual bronze medal Fontainebleau in 1980. Again, one of the very, very experienced international riders for the United States. Torrance has a new horse now. Uh, a horse that has had a lot of success in big-time three-day event competition, but not with Torrance. Um, she bought the horse that had been ridden by a New Zealand rider. So now Torrance is trying to get together with a, a new horse after having... Wow, she had one rail there. She just she well, left off. Well, that um, certainly moves her down. In fact, that moves her three places too. That's if it stays the same way now. Right. Well, of course, other people might have problems also. See, he's a big, strong horse. I think certainly how, covering the ground here. Yeah, huge strides. And Tremendous that was a big jump over, over that. that one. Torrance sort of settles down after having the problem at the... having one rail down. Mark of a cool competitor is to be able to have something go wrong and not let it affect the rest. Oh boy, she was lucky there. She, that horse really hit that rail and it stayed up. Really had to work hard to get over that one. No. And then a huge jump over that big spread fence. And another good fence over the last for Torrance Watkins. You can... Next in the ring is number 50. This is Better and Better, written by J. Michael Plum. Currently in third place with a score of 48.2. Mike and Better and Better also went to Le Mulin for the last two years. 1980, he won the event there, and then last year he was second at it. Now this horse, note, better Mr. and better, Plum has represented the United States in and all Mike. of the Olympic competition <clears throat> since 1960. Nigel, this, uh, this combination of better and better and Mike won the individual silver medal in the 1976 Olympics in Montreal. And that's when the Americans won the, the gold medal gold there, medal. right? And uh, this has got to be one of the most experienced combinations still competing in the world today. This horse has been a top class horse. This is the sixth year he's stayed, he's been at the top, which is a long time for a horse to maintain that kind of form. He's only seven when he won the silver medal. A real young horse then. That's, that's young to be competing at the highest levels. Swinging very wide there for any reason. Just Mike probably felt the horse needed that long approach. There's only two points per, or three points between her and, and now the fourth place, which is Chevis Regal. So he can't afford to have a rail down either. Well, if anybody can get a clean round out of a horse, it's generally Mike. He, uh, he's a, the most, probably the most experienced, oh, oh boy, and, and it again, stayed. he that hit was that rail very, very hard, <laughs> and it stayed up, that's enough to make it, as you can probably hear from the oohs and ahs of, of the crowd, this is a very exciting sport. So, 
No, and only just one, one fence go. to go for his clear round and keeping his third place. And third. <laughs> Mike Clawman, better and better. He seems to get better and better every year. And a clean round for better and better and Mr. Michael Plum. Leaving them with a total score of 48.2. Next in the ring, we have number 39. This is Cobblestone, written by Nancy Bliss. Currently in second place with a score of 47.6. This is girl you've been coaching, right, Denny? And she's had a very successful last few years she was national junior champion and right. the leading junior rider one of the good young riders that's coming along looking for a place on the american team only probably only point six between excuse me for interrupting denny but point six between her and third place so nothing can go wrong for her to keep second place right the uh pressure on a young rider who has not been in international competition is generally greater than it is on the old veterans like Jim Wofford or Mike Plum. Or, and so it's a real right, test. Now we, let's the, look on the monitor for her to go through here. Riding very, very nicely, nicely through, there. through there. From where we are, we just can't quite see the whole of that fence there. She's and really she's moving on at the moment. 22 years old. She hmm. won a division at the preliminary level already today. And she now had the coming to score of all the preliminary division. Right, now coming to this very difficult, I think. Oh, that rolled, but stayed. And stayed, and she it's another one to go through there, and hitting it very hard and having it stay up. They got good glue on the bottom of it, then. Something. Now a big fence over that. Just into two. the water. Two to go to keep her second place. And one to go now for Nancy Bliss. Oh, what over a jumping that one, too. She really stood back. <coughs> and Nancy Bliss and Cobblestone. Can you get away from the platform, please? And a close call at fence nine, but it's nonetheless a clean round for Cobblestone and Nancy Bliss. And they retained their second place with a score of 47.6. Entering the ring now, the last horse of the competition here in Kentucky. Number 14, the Grey Goose, written by Kim Walness. And Kim comes in here with just one Currently point. Currently in first place with a score of 46.6 are the Grey Goose and Kim Walness. Just one point between her and uh, Cobblestone, Grey Goose, uh, an Irish horse, a very <coughs> talented horse, right, Denny? I would say that there are many people who feel that this is one of the best horses in the world today competing in international three-day events. Horse of tremendous speed and scope, and he's a good dressage horse, and he's a good show jumper. Kim would really like to have a slot on the team for the world championships. And Probably got a very good chance. Very good it. chance of doing it. Hate to, you always think you're going to jinx somebody if you start saying that before they get around, but... <coughs> well, we'll, we'll pretend she can't hear us. It's right through there. there. a huge jump. If I keep holding my breath like this, we'll never be able to talk for the rest of the competition. No, well, the pressure is on. Put in a little chip stride there, short stride, but then nicely over that. Oh, turning very wide there to get back to this one. Gonna have to take it at an angle. Made he no can difference. can do that. Now coming to this difficult downhill combination. Easily oh, sailed there. Through. Sailed through. <clears throat> she just got three to go now. Whoa, she took a huge chunk of it. Into the water. And one to go. One to go, and she'll be the new. And she is oh, the oh, clean winner of the 1982 Rolex Kentucky three day event. And now for the presentation of the awards, we go to the public address announcer, Brian O'Connor. 
and the winner of the advanced division here at the Rolex Kentucky three-day event, we have number 14, The Grey Goose, written by Kim Walnut with a score 46.6. Presenting the award to Ms. Walnut is Mr. Poutin, the Executive Vice President of the Rolex Watch USA and President of Rolex in Canada. Once again, the winners of the Advanced Division here at the Kentucky three-day event, 1982, sponsored by the Rolex Watch USA and the Almadan Vineyard. Jenny, as Kim completes her victory gallop, I'd like to say thank you to you for helping me here and uh, what a wonderful event this has been and it really has been Kentucky, the Look at that ultimate gallop. trial. And now for Denny Emerson and myself, Nigel Cassidy, goodbye. The preceding program was made possible by a grant from Rolex Corporation.